Another year rolls around and Connor and McGann are off to Mars to get married because he'll do anything for his wife Babsy Boo Bear. They grow up so fast. What they don't know is that they have a secret admirer. King Saturn Jax tried to end racism between the Martians but he was murdered. The Zeta tube is ready for testing and Martian Manhunter volunteers for tribute but it explodes. They're caught in a cave-in and McGann thought she sent someone while Garfield is freaking out because Connor has a small scratch. The Legionnaires observe from a distance and decide delivers a bomb with same day shipping to Macomb, who is now going by Malafakalalalala or something. Garfield is slowly losing it and starts getting a PTSD attack because he sees Brion about to kill Superboy. He thinks the best idea is to separate Connor from his superpowered friends and leaves him in the dust storm. Thankfully everyone is rescued and brought back. Garfield claims McGann fixed his mind but she never touched him and recognizes it's the same signature from the cave-in. With new information, Prince Jem tries to win back his ex-girlfriend. She she admits killing the king was an accident with her emotions getting the best of her, but a murder is a murder. Connor finds the bomb and tries to melt it in the lava, but it explodes leaving traces of kryptonite in the air. Martian Manhunter gets them out of there who is perfectly fine by the way, but McGann is devastated and cries a river because you haven't subscribed yet. Professor Artemis is followed to the university, but she gets a jump on the pursuer. Onyx Adams warns them Cassandra Savage will ask to join her team as a mole for the shadows, and there she is. Artemis calls in League of Shadows expert Cheshire, who isn't able to get anything out of them either. Spider-Man somehow sneaks inside and makes himself known. The fight ends with Lady Shiva holding a sword to her daughter's throat and wants to trade Orphan for Cassandra, and Garfield's been mourning over Connor. They arrive in Santa Prisca, but Black Onyx catches Cassandra climbing with only one arm and puts a sword to Cassandra, but her arm is slowly pushed away as she rips off her glamour charm. Cheshire comes in and gasses everyone to save her sister, but it only lasts a few seconds and now they're surrounded. Shiva recalls how Orphan was sent to assassinate Joker, but Batgirl got in the way and she had a change of heart. Barbara destroyed the nanobots which Cassandra used to hack their computers. Orphan frees herself and takes out the lights, but obviously you can't beat the League of Shadows in the dark, so Shade bails them out. Cheshire sees her daughter with a Cheshire mask and runs to Infinity Island to finish things, but they have a great therapy program so Cheshire and Black Onyx stay behind to settle down. Clarion is a Chaos Lord who wiped out Vandal Savage's village of metahumans, but he couldn't kill Savage because he just kept coming back to life. In the present day, there's a new Lord of Chaos child. That village eventually became Atlantis, led by his immortal grandson Arian, who met his demise to a falling statue. His crown was a gift from the Lords of Order and used its magic to create the Atlanteans. Vandal tried to drown the Atlanteans but they just swam into the oceans, and in the present day, child is too overpowered and beats up everybody. During the Babylonian Empire, his son Nabu was killed. The Lords of Order really liked this Nabu guy and used his soul to create the Helmet of Fate. Zatanna seeks out Dr. Fate's help and and her students prove themselves worthy with a little help from yours truly. Before anyone can answer the door, Child kills Tikal, severing his anchor to the mortal plane. Then she blows up the tower. Mary starts leeching everybody's energy but she misses. They chase her all the way to the North Pole where they lose another fight. Clarion becomes the magic school bus and finds our heroes, and Garfield quits his acting career. Phantom Stranger brings Vandal before the Lords of Chaos and Order, who convinces them to cut off Child's power. After finding a new cat for Clarion, all the magic Magicians have another go at Child, but she claps back even harder. Mary proceeds to drain everyone's power, and they destroy Child's anchor. Zatanna proposes they take turns being Dr. Fate, except for Mary because she's too greedy, and senses Connor may still be alive. Mary is in tears and ushers the magic word, while Perdita breaks up with Garfield. Ocean Master interrupts a meeting between Calder and his fellow Atlanteans. Even with everyone fighting against him, there's still no match for his plot armor, until a stranger shows up and single-handedly takes him out and disappears, and Connor wakes up in a strange dimension next to a girl. A pillar of fire sprouts from the ocean floor, and the stranger shows up to help contain it, who reveals himself to be the immortal Arian. The legionnaires are getting desperate and ask Superman for help. They come from the future and fail to save Superboy, but Superman can still be of use, and they leave to find Kid Flash. In the other dimension, the trail leads him to a monster, and after calming down it goes right through him. After talking to Ocean Master, Orin's like, whoa, that head of yours is all kinds of messed up. Up. So he runs a DNA test and finds out he's a clone. The real Ocean Master died last season. McGann and her friends fail to slap any sense into him, so they send him to the final boss, Black Canary. Meanwhile, Connor sees McGann and kills Superman, then falls unconscious. McGann reads his mind and finds out they transferred the real Orm into Arian's clone body. Orm is voted in as the High King.
king and turns into dust as soon as he puts on Arian's crown. Orin then crowns Mera the high king because she doesn't turn into dust. Calder takes a leave. Lagan and Orin both three join the Justice League as Aquaman because there's like 10 Green Lanterns, and fake Orm is let go. Orion is alerted of a bug that stole a ruction cell and tracks it down. While they're busy, someone sticks something onto it and leaves. The kids then take the cell and start blowing things up, which makes Orion go absolutely insane, but he manages to calm down and Metron takes the cell. Macaroni is now working with Darkseid and he's told to follow Lord Zod's orders, and Connor suddenly finds himself before the great General Zod, who tells him they're in the Phantom Zone. Basically, General Zod wants to take over the galaxy, and the Legion of Superheroes go, you can't do that, and sends him into the Phantom Zone. And because the Legion will be inspired by Superboy, Lord Zod went back in time to destroy him. The Legion chased him through the time stream, but they failed to save Superboy. Now that they're stuck here, they need the help of an expert time traveler. The Green Lanterns answer a distress call and finds Razor, a former Red Lantern. He wants his red ring back from Metron, and in the ensuing chaos, he somehow ends up wearing both rings and punches Metron into his own boom tube. Lord Zod and his team are waiting on the other side and ambushes Metron, but he tricks them and escapes. Mantis powers through the pain to save his team and locates the projector. Zod introduces Superboy to his people, and after losing himself to the Phantom Zone, he joins the House of Zod. Black Canary tells Garfield he's powerless and he finally breaks down. They split up and Orion's team finds them. During the fight, the projector is activated. Connor's like, great leader, don't leave me. And Saturn Girl gets through to Phantom Girl right before Bioship destroys the projector. Lorzod kills Tomar Ree and escapes on Bioship. And somewhere in all this, Forager falls in love with Forager, but Forager becomes a Green Lantern. Santana shows up asking for some superb detective skills. They believe Kid Flash's new friends kidnapped him, but Superman shuts down that theory. After seeing Rocket's memories, they conclude Connor is trapped in the Phantom Zone. Superboy tells General Zod literally everything he knows, and Phantom Girl finally wakes up. Brion and his Infinitors defend metahumans, while Fury becomes increasingly suspicious of the Ambassador. Violet decides on they-them pronouns and finally visits Brion, but the Ambassador gets in the way. The team enters the Magic School Bus, and Zatanna opens a portal to the Phantom Zone. Zod's control over Superboy is too strong, forcing Phantom Girl to leave without him. Phantom Girl tells them Connor is still alive. McGann's ready to go, but Phantom Girl goes, I don't know where he is. Fortunately, there's a boy stuck inside a box with a GPS to the Phantom Zone, and Orion shows up with a mother box to get them there. Marshmallow tricks Phantom Girl into revealing their plan and takes them out. The team locates Connor almost immediately, but he already pledged his loyalty to Zod, and they step through the portal where Lord Zod welcomes his parents. Lord Zod takes them to Superman's fortress to power up for the season finale. Nightwing goes through the boom tube and destroys the two pods, but pulls an injustice. They emerge from the explosion, and the Eye of Ekron chooses a new armor. Empress. Everyone evacuates the collapsing boom tube, but Rocket fails to make it out. The other team lost Mother Box, so they've been flying through space this whole time, and gets blasted upon arrival. And General Zod prepares to have Connor kill Superman on live TV. Turns out nobody died because they're pretty good at faking their own deaths by now. Connor can't bring himself to kill Superman, and McGann restores his memories. Zatanna heals Superman, and they punch all the bad guys into the boom tube. Of course, the flashes and everyone else shows up after the fight. Vandal Savage intercepts the Kryptonians thanks to Clarion. A pregnant Ursa is transported to Daxum, and Mozart to Durla. Rocket ended up in Metron's vault, and Lorzod escapes using the Time Sphere, but it dumps him on Mars right as the bomb explodes. Brainiac 5 rescues the Legionnaires as they finally get married, and Darkseid gets two new goons for the next season, Black Mary and Kara Zor-El. If you're still watching this, I think you like this video, so check out my channel for more. Bye!